Hi, I'm Andrew Trendle. You're watching Enemy, and we're here with Ollie Sykes off of Bring Me the Horizon. All right. Are you? I don't think we. You had fangs last time we spoke. <laughs> no, these are new edition. Well, we're here to launch the massive new single "Die for You." Um, this is a, this is an interesting one because it's, it, it feels like it's the most kind of pop leaning thing you've done, but it's also still heavy and like furious. I mean, like, would you agree with that? I mean, how would you describe the sound of "Die for You"? Yeah, man. I mean, that that was the goal with this record. Like, um, we wanted to do something that were like, you know, like obviously as as we've evolved, like you know, from I guess from like Sem Paternal thing, it's like we've kind of kept pushing like ourselves to be more mainstream tracks and stuff that could, you know, that kind of took us into arenas and and like a lot a lot of rock bands, I think like when you start doing that, you were. Uh, you're so focused on like, you know, making this kind of more palatable music and stuff that like, and you start making, you know, you start making melodies that are more accessible and stuff like that. And and just naturally you, you kind of start watering down what you do as well. Like the screaming goes and the heaviness goes and stuff. And you're more focused on that. And everyone does that. It's just like, you just get so into like pushing yourself musically and stuff that you, that it, it rarely does a bank carry on like retaining their like extreme parts but but like evolve in a different way and I was like what would it be like if we did that do you know what I mean if it still had like the intensity and the heaviness of, of, of our older stuff but we're still pushing ourselves in like similar ways of, of ammo in terms of like making it really like the melodies really pop do you know what I mean because that's like kind of what I love about music it's like and it's like, and obviously that's where we've kind of divided fans and stuff is like, obviously like I come from a heavy background and rock music and heavy music is, you know, is kind of my first obsession in life and stuff. So like, there's always been that part of me, but at the same time, it's like, I've always loved like pop music and melodies and stuff like that. So it was like, really like, how do we blend those two worlds completely? Like not just make like, kind of like poppy rock music, but make extreme pop music, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that was like the goal with this record. So like kind of glad you noticed, to be honest. <laughs> Could you, would you, would you name any kind of pop influences or was it just a matter of running down that path as hard as you could? Um, it's like just it being more contemporary in terms of the melodies and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Like pop music and just music has evolved so much over the last like five or six years in, in terms of like what melodies sound like they're a lot more intricate they're a lot quicker they're a lot like they're a lot more obscure do you know what i mean to what they used to be as well like you can't really put your finger on what the next pop single you know what the next huge song's gonna be you can't really put your finger on that and it's like it's always changing so it's like it was definitely like it feeling more like in terms of melody stuff that could sit on the radio today this is definitely like but whereas post-human survival horror was definitely very new metal and like influenced, this one's very emo. Like it's so it's like, and that was a challenge in itself. Like take those kind of influences and make them feel modern and contemporary, and not just like some throwback old school shit. Which was you know like for post-human, uh, for survival horror, sorry, it was it was a little bit easier to do because it's kind of what we do anyway. Um, but we knew we wanted to reinvent ourselves for each record and do something differently and like emo and screamo and you know bands like blood brothers and norma jean and glass Joe and shit like that is like they were the artists that like like i got into rock music through new, new metal through linky park and stuff but it I, when i became completely obsessed with it it was like kind of like screamo and american hardcore bands and stuff like that so it was like we, that's what i wanted to pay homage to with this with this next record and actually making that feel contemporary and modern was a, a much more of a challenge than the last record. Lyrically, this doesn't really take any prisoners either. I mean, um, you say it's about um, you, you, you've re you're revisiting that topic of uh, toxic obsession and addiction right on this track. So, yeah, it's kind of like tackling the song as if this one, a healthy obsession that I have is is a, a relationship and almost like a mistress, really, and stuff, And because I guess I've learned that over the past year and stuff as I've been like recovering. It's like when you, you know, addiction and stuff like that, when you're, when you're in it, it is like you're having an affair for other people and stuff because you're doing this thing behind everyone's back. It's a secret and, you know, it is like you're cheating on people or, you know, betraying people and stuff. And 
and obviously never saw it in that way. Yeah, I always just thought, you know, I'm just harming myself. I'm not harming other people. I mean, I knew I was harming people, but I didn't, I didn't realize quite the level of like how much it can fuck up people's trust and stuff like that. And um, yeah, like the topic for the next record is, is, is really going to be about like, I don't know, as I'm getting older and stuff, it's like, well, what are the life lessons I've learned and like, what can I give to like the next generation or to, to younger people looking up and listening to us and like what is it that I can teach that like or what is it that I know is a truth that I need to learn myself and accept it for the you know finally and stuff like that and obviously addiction and stuff like that's played a big part in my life and stuff and it's like it's kind of it's a bit triumphant this song for me in a way because it's it's finally accepting these things of like you know I'm not someone that can drink alcohol or or smoke weed or do all these all these things because I just have a problem with it and it always leads to like it always goes down the same road and stuff and that's not something I've been able to admit to myself for a long time so or ever um, so like this song kind of is like this defiant like stamp of like no like I'm making a choice now because I can't just keep doing this for my life because it's gonna end up just one way. So in a way, so like survival horror was about kind of going to war and this one's kind of about healing. Would you say that's fair? Yeah, that's bang on, to be honest. It's, you know, I, I, again, with the with the way I wrote the lyrics, I wanted it to like be able to mean a lot of things. Like, I don't know what it means to me, but I also wanted it to mean, you know, if someone else is going through something similar, but not the same, or even if someone's in a relationship, but also even with the planet and stuff, I think it's about like us, saying like what the things that we do is it worth losing you know our livelihoods for or, or you know our quality of life or or the planet and stuff like that so like i kind of wanted it to like because I, I i mean that's what i i've always said is like i think before we can change the world we've all got to change ourselves and i think before we can have compassion for other creatures like animals or even the planet and stuff we've all got to find like this compassion for ourselves and that's not something i had for myself like um you know last year whatsoever and i think so many people are in this place where they don't think they're good enough and they don't think they're worth better and stuff like that so like even though this song talks about like you know it's 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 quite personal and it's about addiction and stuff i feel like it's also gonna if you conquer that part of your life it's also like can mean something on a on a bit of a, a bigger scale and uh and what can you tell us about the video because understand you self-directed this one again and you've been overseas right yeah i went to ukraine to shoot it oh amazing yeah, it was a lot of fun just being back on a set and well, just doing band shit to be honest. Like, we haven't played any shows or all yet. So this is like the first like band you kind of get back to work thing. So it was just like a blast. Yeah, like I had, like I wrote this whole story out and like I wanted to tell a lot more than I got to tell. But like obviously it's like a three minute video. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So like I had to like settle for just kind of telling like this small part of this story within the song that, um, I would really like to like kind of continue somehow. I don't know how it's going to be, whether we'll do it in our next music videos, although we've probably like spent our whole budget for the next 10 years. <laughs> um, or like do something special with maybe like, you know, a DSP or like a YouTube or something like that, or write a comic or something like that. But yeah, so it's just like a small segment of, of, of story in there. So the next uh, EP is due early 2022, I believe. And is it still going to be under the kind of, um post-human umbrella or have plans moved along a bit? Yeah, this is it's still post-human, yeah. Still doing uh, three more records. Oh, amazing. And how, because I understand um, you obviously didn't anticipate COVID getting in the way quite the way it did. How's the rollout going? Are you just still reckon you'll get two or three more out in the next year or is it going to be like a case by case basis? Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I won't make any promises because we were expecting probably to have another record out by now. But I mean, I basically, stayed in brazil until like about a month ago i went over there last september so we carried on writing but like it was with the time difference and everything else and just as a, almost like being like kind of desperate just to get back in a room and do it properly and stuff and also like yeah like reinventing yourself every time so like a little more difficult than you think i mean you have all these <laughs> ideas but like actually when we came to like to, like this song die for you We've been working on it for a fucking months, just getting the, getting the balance right. Because, you know, we had this kind of idea on the table, right? We want to make 
pop, we want to make it like the popiest thing we've ever done, but also keep it like super extreme and not like water it down and make it still feel like bring the horizon. Do you know what I mean? And that was a challenge. And then, you know, also like going, right, it's going to pay homage to like emo and screamo and stuff was like, all right, sounds sick. But actually when you start doing it, it's really hard to like not make it just feel like some weird old crap music. Um, so that, you know, it was like, we were doing stuff that sounded like fucking My Chemical Romance and like the stuff that sounded like old like vampire emo bands and stuff and it just took us a while to get the balance right until we got something we're like right this feels like this feels like it feels emo as fuck but it also feels super contemporary and we knew we wanted it to feel like futuristic like we had this like term future emo in our head where, like it needs to sound like future emo mm. um, and we wanted you know we were taking kind of a bit of inspiration from like a lot of this shit that's popping up now that they call, you know, hyper pop and all that kind of stuff is like we wanted to take some of that intensity and craziness and just like unhingedness of that kind of that world and, 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 and bleed it into our song as well. So, yeah, it took a little while, but I think now that we've got that first song, we can we know what direction we're heading in. So, like, hopefully it will be a little quicker now, but it's just been hard, man, like not being together, like it's been busy so mm. yeah we expected probably to get this record out a little sooner um but we'll just see there's not like i mean i think we'll probably get them all out by next year but at the same time we might not like it'll just come when it comes is, is there anything you can tell us about the um potential direction of the remaining records or again is that kind of like a see how you feel on the day kind of thing we know what well i know what i want it to do so like I've got like a clear idea what 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 direction the third one will take and then also the fourth one. All I'll say is it's quite asymmetric in, in, in the way it is. Like it's it's gonna be like the fourth one's gonna be quite a curveball. Mm. And I'll, I guess what I'll say is like each one's gonna pay a homage to like the music we listened to growing up or like the music we were. Do you know what I mean? The music we are, like like it's gonna say influences and it's gonna be like I can't really explain it without like ruining like my idea, especially I won't want to say it and then it won't work because that's like, like I found out with the second re second record, you can have this idea in your head and it's a lot harder to do. But <laughs> like, yeah, I know the fourth one's going to be quite different to the, I mean, they're all going to be different, but the fourth one's going to be a bit of a surprise, I think, for people. And um, what can you tell us about the uh, the upcoming arena tour? Last time we spoke, you said you had this this dream vision in mind that was like, a kind of like rotating circus where everyone kind of shared the spotlight at the same time. You and the support acts would be like a rotating thing. How is it? Have you managed to pull that off, or is it just what is it something different entirely now? No, not for this tour. I mean, it's, to be honest, just getting back and playing some shows is like basically the most you can ask for right now. You know, like even with like COVID, it's just going to be a, quite different. You know what I mean? Like with all the bands that stay in the bubbles, there's no hanging out backstage together your family and friends can't even come backstage and you know it's gonna it's gonna be different so it weren't really the time to like start shaking things up do you know what i mean but we have been speaking about it and it may be happening in america like we've approached some other bands of like and and i told them we told them the idea and they're into it and stuff so it's just like it's weird because it's just like trying to do somewhere you're like with no egos not ego death tour or whatever but it's being in a rock band is just and management and record labels and all that stuff is kind of hard to zap the ego and the you know the um logistics side out of it is it's not it's so it was that it's, it's still like a dream of mine that i would love to do um and definitely try it out at least once and see how it goes but yeah this first tour back's not going to be it yeah though well, this one's just about turning it up and getting back to it yeah yeah, I mean, production-wise and stuff, we're doing we're doing something very different, and like I think it's going to be incredible. I, like I haven't seen it in person yet, but like all like so far, it's looking good. And the whole idea behind it was to try and make a to make a show that obviously was really good, but also like economically, like and like it, like way less like impact on 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 stuff, like in terms of trucks you've got to take out and weight and heaviness so we come up with this really cool idea that like really like just cuts all that stuff in half to be honest and 
Uh, we have a new tour manager who's really into it and who really gets the whole stuff that I'm, that I'm interested in doing with just reducing waste and reducing all that shit. Um, so it's, it's been really nice because it's actually starting to happen. Do you know what I mean? It's like, like we're trying to do it on the last tours and stuff, trying to get people to, we bought all the bands like their own bottles and had water tanks and stuff, but people were just, it just, no one was really that interested in it and stuff. And it's just like, I think people's view of it is just like, look, we're on tour, you, you ain't, you ain't saving the planet. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Which is true, but just trying to like make, get the gears rolling and stuff and just trying to do every little bit. And, you know, it's and, and to be honest for a band, it's, it's, it's in everyone's interest. Cause it's like, if you say it, it's money and, you know, economical impact go hand in hand, you know what I mean? So you're saving money as well as, do you know what I mean? And like, for us, we've always, we've not made that much money on tours because we just go fucking crazy with production and, you know, we don't think about anything. We're just like, we want to do all this, we want to do all this, and it's like, we don't care, do you know what I mean? And it's like, it's actually quite nice to be doing this because it's just being more clever about stuff, do you know what I mean? And still like, I think like this show's gonna, like what we're doing is, it's, it's not being done before. So it's, um, as long as it works, it's, I think it's going to be fucking incredible. But it also feels good because you know you're not like you know you know you're not just going out and just without a care. I care about like the kind of impact you're having on on things, you know. Amazing. Well, looking forward to it, Ollie. Thanks very much, man. Nice one, dude. Good to see you again. Yeah.